Only a few years ago, we were a discouraged people because we were the first to lose our jobs when old man depression came along and the last to get them back. We struggled vainly to regain our bearings while depression, fear, and failure stalked the nation. A tenth of the population of the United States we formed as a race over a sixth of the unemployed. One out of every four of us was on relief. In vain, we sought for something to restore our confidence, our hope, our courage. Without jobs, we had no money. And without money, we could not purchase food for the hungry mouths at home. Our only hope lay in charity. Hunger drove our people to the bread line. Anxiously, we waited, waited for some sign of better days. Then came the federal government's work program. One by one, it took us out of the bread line. It gave us a new chance to take a normal place in the life of our community. It made us self-supporting. It changed the haggard, hopeless faces of the bread line into faces filled with hope and happiness. For now, we work again. Unskilled laborers, the forgotten men of past generations, now work steadily at decent wages. The nation over, they're building and repairing schools, public buildings, community centers, and airports to meet the changing needs of our modern world. In one project at the nation's capital, 1,200 men are employed in improving bowling field, grading, constructing runways, building hangars, and administration buildings. In addition to the hundreds of unskilled laborers who were removed from relief rolls, many skilled workers are employed in this important improvement project. Hundreds of homes have been freed from the bondage of poverty as their breadwinners find security and hope in their new jobs. In New York City, a WPA housing demolition project is underway, which will greatly improve the living conditions of families of moderate means. In many other cities of the country, old tenements and fire traps are being torn down to make way for modern buildings containing comfortable sanitary apartments. At Colonial Park in Harlem, as in many other congested areas, WPA workers have constructed a huge swimming pool and are now completing a bathhouse which will accommodate 4,100 persons. In this construction project, skilled workers are employed, utilizing the knowledge of their trades gained in the days before depression. Swimming pools are particularly valuable to the community because they offer a haven of relaxation to young and old during the hot summer months. At the same time, swimming pools remove children from the crowded city streets, providing every safeguard to prevent such tragedies as were all too common to the old swimming holes. Typical of the park improvement projects underway all over the country is another feature of the improvement program at Colonial Park. A wading pool has been built by WPA workers in which the youngsters may splash to their heart's content. New additions to the playground area have been made possible by the grading and improvement of parts of the park which were formerly merely decorative. Even the youngest children find plenty of opportunities for play under watchful supervision. In many parts of the country, nursery schools have been established where almost 10,000 children of our needy families are provided with hot meals, supervised play activities, and excellent preschool training under competent instructors removed from relief roles. In these projects, employment has been provided for 600 teachers, nurses, dietitians, and cooks. At the other extreme of age, more than 300,000 adults have learned to read and write for the first time in their lives. Eagerly they study, realizing how very much a little knowledge can mean in our modern workaday life. Teachers drawn from relief roles instruct them in useful subjects such as arithmetic and foreign languages. In Harlem, where a large part of the population is from Puerto Rico and Central and South America, 
A knowledge of Spanish is valuable to workers, shopkeepers, and others. In this class, elementary instruction in the spoken language is given by native teachers. In cooperation with the National Youth Administration, 26,500 young men and women are employed as instructors, laboratory assistants, and clerical helpers. Thus, they are enabled to continue their education. Clerical white-collar workers find employment at filing and checking important records, at typing, and at such unusual occupations as abstracting and filing time-worn land records, so that they may be available for the use of future generations. As part of the program of rehabilitation and the conservation of human resources, a number of household training schools have been established by WPA. In these schools, girls from relief families are prepared for domestic work which will make them self-supporting. Others take the course in order to learn the arts of homemaking for use in their own homes. In modern kitchens, under competent instructors, the girls are taught to cook and to prepare salads and other delicacies which add much to everyday meals. Here's where you may be able to learn something. This is the way the girls are taught to make beds, an art which few have mastered. These household training courses have already sent hundreds of girls out into the world, well equipped to secure domestic positions and able to command skilled workers' wages. Health education is an important part of the WPA program. At a number of health centers in large cities, qualified instructors teach groups of women first aid methods and the proper care of children. The care of the sick is also taught by trained instructors at health centers throughout the country. These projects which you have seen are part of a broad national educational program through which WPA has helped millions of children and adults. In a number of communities, sewing rooms have been established in which are employed women who are the breadwinners for their families. Here garments are made for distribution to needy families. Musicians and singers too found employment in orchestral and vocal groups. These art singers, organized and directed by William Lawrence, have successfully presented a great many programs of classical music. One of our greatest contributions to the world of music is the spiritual, recognized the world over as a fine example of the folk music of America. This choir, directed by Juanita Hall, presents our traditional music in all its beauty. Yeah, it's a good song, we're turning green, and 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 we're turning green
Under the works program, musicians, artists, writers, and actors contribute their share to the cultural development of the community. The Negro Theater Unit of the Federal Theater Project produced a highly successful version of Shakespeare's immortal tragedy, Macbeth, which far exceeded its scheduled run in New York and was later sent on a tour of the country. The scene was changed from Scotland to Haiti, but the spirit of Macbeth and every line in the play has remained intact. In this contribution to the American theater and in other projects under the works program, we have set our feet on the road toward a brighter future. And I care not if thou does for me as much. Fear not, till burn of wood do come to Dunsinane. And now of wood comes to Dunsinane. And with the estate of the world, we're now undone. Ring the alarm bell. No, Ring, come, Rush. At least we'll die with harness on our backs. What's he that was not born a woman? Such a one am I to fear or none. Let me find him, fortune. Tyrant, show thy face. I cannot strike a wretched turns whose arms are hired to bear their stairs. If thou be a slain and with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghost will haunt thee still. What is thy name? <laughs> my name is Macbeth. Turn, hellhound, turn. Of all men else, I have avoided thee. But get thee back. My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. Then ye'll be coward and live to be the show in the gaze of time. We'll have thee as our era monsters are, painted upon a pole and under it. Here may you see the tyrant. I will not yield. Though Burnham would be come to Dunsinane, yet I will try the land. I have no land. Lay on, Macduff. Let them be he who first cries, hold enough. For I bear a charmed life which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm, and let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. How can it be the tongue that tells me so? <laughs> and be these juggling fiends no more believed. And the usurper's cursed head. The time is free. All hail Malcolm. Peace. The charm. 